Campbell here, Ram Studio Comics, and today's video is going to be kind of explaining the process of how to go about drawing a dragon. Um, I've had some uh, people request it. Actually, out of nowhere, I got a couple people that requested uh, this information, which I think is kind of strange because I'm like uh, not really the dragon drawing dude, but um, but I, I do feel that I can uh, show you a couple things that might help you. Uh, get to what you're trying to do with that. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first off, I want to let you know that um, I do look at reference when it comes to things like this. Um, you know, some people may frown at, say, looking at other people's dragons or whatever. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is actually just look at uh, reptiles. Um, you know, I, I might have like uh, various pictures of, you know, alligators to snakes to uh, bearded dragons, the smaller reptiles that you can purchase and have for pets or, or great ones um, and just kind of conglomerate those together. Um, there's one in particular that, uh, and I want to say it's a type of bearded dragon, it has these pointed kind of uh, scales. They all have these, you know, kind of slanted pointed eyes um, and then some of the things that I think looks cool is like when you do a dragon, like say this is the brow area, I'll bring this line up and have these points kind of come off the brow and that's actually uh, they got some really cool ones on some of the bearded dragons they actually have rows and rows of points uh, they look really cool they're fun to draw um, and they make for a really cool uh, fantasy creature like a dragon or something so all you have to do um, if you don't want to look at other people's dragons and you know you don't want to hear the hoopla if somebody's like oh that looks like so-and-so's take on you know this mythical creature um, you can just grab uh, reptile magazines and and go to town and just kind of hodgepodge the uh, the things together um, you know like uh, some of the characteristics that are um, consistent with them are the texturing of the scales um, but then you can just go really crazy with you know the pattern of the scales the pattern of the the points um, the way the jaw uh, you know hinges and opens up and the rows of teeth and things like that so you really just kind of extrapolate from what you see there and make your own thing so you know don't feel bad because you know you're drawing something that's not really there I mean unless you're trying to uh, recreate the reptile that you're drawing then you might be a little more critical on your your work but as far as drawing a, a fantastical creature like a dragon there's no right or wrong way so maybe with that in mind you'll uh, free yourself up to just kind of create and let your ideas flow because you you know you really can't get it wrong um, one of the things I watch out for is the way the mouths are you know like uh, I tend to always do this thing where there's a point here I bring the jaw back like this here's where you got a fleshy amount of the cheek even though it's not gonna be it's gonna be covered in scales also um, and then you know I have to take the jawline and figure out okay if it's dropping down well you know this is just really crude at first uh, and see where the you know so it's the teeth <laughs> really quick um, you know that doesn't look very threatening he almost looks like he's smiling or he's friendly uh, so that would be a passive dragon you know which we're not gonna draw a passive dragon today so I'm gonna back this up and it all started with the uh, the shape of that that mouth was too much like a smile or uh, not threatening enough. So uh, one of the references I might look at for that is like you know an alligator. They have a very threatening jawline, uh, very vicious looking. Maybe too because we know what they're capable of, but you know it's they have that very uh, mean, threatening, you know, vicious behavior. So, but if you look at the jawline, it's it's kind of uh, no frills there, no no happiness about it. It's just you know, open shut kind of case thing. You know, like all right, say if I do like that, you know, there's less curvature there. Uh, it almost looks a little bit more threatening already, and I haven't even added the teeth. So we'll throw some teeth in there. See if this comes a little closer to the threatening look we want. Yeah, see that looks more vicious than the other one. The other one looked like they were smiling a little too much. Um, and then the other thing is like a downward turn here which is obviously a resemblance of a frown uh, then the webbing on the side of the the opening 
all that kind of adds to kind of the alien husk or I shouldn't say alien but makes it look more vicious and more um, reptilian and, and scary so uh, so let's try that even though that's still rough um, you know very little as far as meat and uh, information around the, the te uh, tooth line or whatever uh, and then as far as the chins I tend to always kind of spike out the chins you know so um, you know but that's all preference and what you might do there just kind of work the jawline back like this I like to do some wrinkles under the neck alright so now here's a part where um, you know cause I'm, I'm trying to just structure this at this point and get something cool before I go too far into certain details um, so now the other part that I always focus on uh, there's a couple ways that I'll tend to draw or look at dragons one is that they their heads uh, kind of expand back I'm just gonna draw this crude shape uh, like the, that's that's crazy looking it looks like a little bit of a, a lion or lion's mane but um you know where the head may go back and kind of have this widened out shape is what I'm trying to show you before I draw it uh, and others where it might just point out and be smaller you know the slicked back hair dragon so um, you know or maybe even a rounded kind of dome like that now it looks more like a uh, something out of Jurassic Park like a uh, what were those called the velociraptors more of that kind of style so the shapes uh, do a lot you know to to define uh, the fierceness of the creature and stuff like that so you just want to kind of look at that as you're you know creating your your art there as far as like what kind of shape and detail you know the the size of the head and the shape of it is going to change the uh, you know the fierceness of the look of the creature um, so I guess what we'll do is do a couple spikes going back let's try that give us a starting point for the look of the the head then we'll have this come back now you're gonna have like a lot of scales and texture you know so you just kind of start scribbling in these little bumps and you know as you build your layers and your this is gonna probably be digitally painted at the end so I'll just keep building upon layer after layer and adding these little textures and things and try to get some cool uh, depth out of this um, and then back here it'll probably be just kind of rows of either overlapping scales or spikes I tend to usually do some kind of spikes down the middle of the head um, let's see in the neck I'm probably gonna do something like is it too much yeah almost looks a little Loch Ness monster there but uh, I'll just keep going with it for a second. Sometimes it'll work out, other times it won't. Um, another cool thing to do, you know, obviously just like the scales and the spikes and all that, is lots of segments. Segments are, are cool looking, they're easy to shade, uh, and I'll show you a little bit of that. And they can add a lot of character uh, to the character. So, um, you know, especially with dragons, there's lots of little segments and things and breaks in them, so uh, look at that for sure. Uh, another thing that looks kind of neat, because um, I'm, I'm actually not digging these horns right here, uh, but it, it did lead me to another perspective on this, uh, is where if you do the spikes like this, if I can get some in there that I like, uh, adding rows of them that define and shape the head. So we'll do a couple big ones like this, something like that, and then maybe some smaller ones. Uh, I think again I think that's some kind of uh, bearded dragon that has a lot of that where there it's actually you know like a beard of spikes so you know you can kind of do something like that where you know just think in terms of drawing a beard on one of your characters but in this case they're you know there's just all spikes in this dude or creature so just remember there's going to be scales almost everywhere so uh, at first I just kind of scribble them in 
because um, I'm, I'm not trying to be too tight lined right now. Uh, it's, it's real easy for me to get overly tight lined and my drawing to come out very stiff. So what I try to do is do a lot of initial uh, scribbling, even try to hold uh, a little bit lighter on the pen. Holding more to the back of the pen will force you to ease up off your drawing and be a little bit more loose and free flowing. And then as you start to detail your work and you're more uh, concrete in your mind of what you want to see on the canvas, then you can tighten up your, uh, your clench on the pen and try to really you know pull out your detail and and draw or paint and in, in further you know precision but it's real important uh, for some people to to learn that because I know it was a big help for me I would always just kinda get frustrated uh, and it was because I was you know trying trying to like say start drawing this dragon here and finish it out in one shape something like that uh, excuse that ugly shape there but what I'm trying to explain is the process that you know your mind takes when trying to create this stuff you know you um, you gotta sometimes just you know open up your mind and let it free flow out not not try to force every aspect of the drawing um, you know you gotta look for those happy little accidents you'll hear me talk about that a lot when I speak about you know art philosophy or whatever um, you know that there are there's a certain uh, uh, organic feel to creating art and, and just letting it happen and zoning out sometimes, you know. It's it's why you can walk up one day and get this, like, really amazing piece and impress yourself at times. And other times you labor and sweat over something and you totally hate it or, you know, want to wanna hide it away from anybody ever seeing it. It's because you're, you know, your heart wasn't into that piece or you were boggled down with 20 other things in your life or whatever so you have to let some of this stuff uh, just flow and be organic and you know sometimes just be inspired you know by other people's work or um, something else in your life you know just, just sometimes you need inspiration so those were some pretty ugly scales uh, now another thing you can do too with stuff like this you can kind of draw in some scales and you know, especially with all the tools in Photoshop, if you want, um, you can draw them all, or you can copy and paste, uh, and you know you can distort too. So, say you have, and actually they, they wouldn't point off at the other points like that. They would actually, let's see, they would overlap into this one a little bit like that. See, and I just looked over at uh, one of my one of my reptilian references for that, so I cheated but I'm not tracing, so that's okay. And I would have put the pictures of reference on here, but YouTube's so funny about if you don't have certain things owned, your property, you know, if I pulled it from a magazine or, you know, some photographer's work, then I shouldn't be monetizing my videos and blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I do monetize my videos. I do look forward to my little tiny stream of income from this stuff. So, um, so I don't, you know, I'm careful not to show certain aspects of things like that. But I think it's really silly because, you know, if you think about it, uh, you know, the uh, the alligator in that picture is not getting paid. Nobody seems to make a big deal about that. But, man, heaven forbid the guy that took a snapshot of him doesn't get his 50 cents. You know, it's just, I don't know, you know, I am I guess I should relate better to that considering I'm an artist. And, you know, people can steal my artwork and do something with it and, you know, oh my God, I, you know, I'd be so upset, I would it'd break my heart. But not really, I guess, because in all honesty, uh, I think there's a saying like plagiarism is the greatest form of flattery or something like that, or something to that extent. It's like, man, if they really like your stuff that much, well, they're going to take it and use it and do something like that. Is it really that bad? I mean, it's, you know, I could see if they're out making millions of dollars with your stuff, then yeah, you want a piece of that pie. But um, if it's not that, you know, if you want to draw my character, Blackstone, and uh, help me promote the character by you, you know, throwing some more of my artwork out there around the world. So be it. You know, I'm not going to get upset about that. So, whatever. Okay, so, yeah, so, you see what I'm doing, though? I'm th just kind of adding little details here. None of this is concrete. You know, I'm going to keep nipping and tucking and poking and prodding this thing until I get it the right way. I might even use um, a little bit of distortion 
Um, in fact, I'll try that right now. Let me try uh, filter, liquefy. Actually, let me select the area. Uh, filter, liquefy. And I might just try to distort portions of the dragon. Sometimes this works, other times it doesn't. I just figured I'll show you. You know, it's, there's there's no right way to right or wrong way to do this stuff. Uh, I'll sometimes just do this to see if something else might look cooler and I can control Z back and forth through it. Uh, like say I want to elongate, you know, the front of the dragon's uh, snout. And obviously the nose will be further down. I'm actually stretching it too much right now. But you just control the brush size, move it around. And it's good to do this early on in the stage of your drawing because it's still just a sketch. So it doesn't matter if my lines aren't perfect. I'm more or less trying to get my my vision down or whatever uh, of what I think looks cool of this character and then I can uh, paint over top of it and fix you know uh, anything that I might be liking or disliking or whatever uh, as I progress through this so so now is the time to get that stuff out of the way you know you're you're racing or you're poking and prodding like I'm doing here you know so like I see this this one right there is too high you know, and I, I'm not going to keep that probably, but I'm just going to show you. Okay, so there's the difference, and if I control Z, you know, it gives a totally different look with that much, that quick uh, kind of move on it. Um, I actually like the original one, so I'm going to keep with that. Um, but I just figured I would show you that. That's an, another cool little trick um, to modify your artwork on the fly and, and get what you want. So, all right, so I'll probably have him kind of bowing his chest out. Control T here and size this sucker down a bit. And let's see, chest kind of bowed out. I kind of start, well, <laughs> and then I'll listen to this. This is where I get too far into the artwork. Uh, yeah, when you, dragons kind of get thicker down here and their arms come up here and their wings do this, yeah, again, we're talking about a fictitious creature. They, There's no uh, playbook here on what they really do, but. That's the fun part about getting into this stuff. You just kind of lose your sense of reality for a minute. Like, yeah, this one time I saw a dragon, and he uh, he looked like this. Sure. Everybody right now is like, oh, my God, this dude is a nerd. Yep, well, probably I'm sitting here drawing pictures when I could be out perusing the town. But I'm not much of a peruser anymore. My perusing days are over. Uh, maybe not over, but they're cut way back. So yeah, just kind of repeat the scales. Now, uh, another cool trick for that, um, I work uh, predominantly in Photoshop. I use a lot of di you know different softwares. If you watch my videos, you'll see that. But um, Photoshop's my main my mainstay. You can probably do something like that, and grab your pointer tool, or your move tool, whatever. And then Control T kind of allows you to swing it around and do all this funky stuff to it. And then if you hold Alt with the pointer tool and pull down, it automatically makes another copy for you. Control T it again, move it around, place it. I should probably should have sized it down. Place it, where did I place it? Uh, kind of up and in there. Hit Enter, Control E combines them and alt pull and then boom 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 you just kind of keep repeating that effect uh, again they're not going to look perfect but I'm just trying to get the texture down the pattern down and then I can uh, modify it when I take the next steps now another thing you can do to make this work better uh, keep hitting control E alt to you know see how it's moving faster because I'm getting more of them in conjunction now and actually I rotated it there. I shouldn't even worry about that. I'm going to show you why. I'm just going to make the pattern itself. Love this effect about Photoshop. It's a big time saver. Control E. Hold Alt. Move it again. Okay, and we'll say that these scales right there are what I'm going to use. Actually, I'll, I'll do it one more time. Because I want to fill in this area right there. And I'll erase the rest. Like so. Delete. Control D for deselect. Okay, so now what I want... Oh, did I not combine them? Alright, there we go. So what I wanted to show you, even though that area is pretty much covered and it looks 
somewhat natural. I mean, the scales are smaller down here, but I think that's fine. I think I would want them a bit larger here. Uh, you don't want them too repetitive or it's going to look really boring and fake and not well thought out. So uh, even this is too repetitive in this area, but I can mix that up when I go to paint it. But what I want to show you is that now if I wanted to make these scales look a little bit more believable in this bend of the neck, I can go to Edit Transform Warp and warps a cool little tool where you can move it around interactively like so and really great for texturing stuff you can texture stuff really quick and you know change it and manipulate it uh, like I said interactively it's it's a pretty neat way to go so just want to show you that real quick so great for things like that and now I'll probably merge that I'll keep a backup of it I'm a layer junkie over here so I'll keep a layer back up and then I'll merge this one down to that so there's my my liner thus far and I'll keep on with the scales here or the segments I should say uh, this is just a sign of a light source that little line right there I like to always kind of draw those in it's more from my comic book background I'm always wanting to line art my shadows even though uh, like I said this would be more of a, a painting um, Okay, so now the wingspan, uh, probably bring that off to about here, bring the wing up, give them like the big uh, talon, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I've seen a couple styles, some people do them like bat wings where I think there's like little fingers up top here, and this is like a thumb or something like that, and the fingers come down. Uh, I believe that's how bat wings go, you, you'll have to look up that reference. You know, that's the other thing I wanted to mention, too. If you think about it, uh, dragons are basically a combination of, in my opinion, uh, let's say a few reptiles and a bat. Um, you know, you got bat wings, you got uh, different reptile features for the head, the jaw, uh, the neck of a snake. Um, what else? There's something else I noticed. A lot of people will give a very uh, lion-esque look to their dragons to probably instill more of the you know the authority figure into the creature you know so I've seen a lot that have a very uh, s uh, significance or a, um, I don't know the right word uh, just very just have a very lion type feel to the artwork you know king of the jungle uh, king of the fantasy land kind of thing so you know they're just a combo of, of animals you know so if you and really, it, any fantasy creature really is. You can almost look at any of them and, and just depict uh, all the different uh, influences they may have had over the years. One of the cool things I, I think is pretty neat about dragons, though, um, is that I want to say almost all cultures have some form of a dragon uh, in their, you know, mythos or whatever. So it's it's kind of freaky in a sense that, you know, that they all kind of have this, this, uh, you know, one way or another throughout the history. And this, and I'm talking like history of before, you know, all the masses kind of were able to uh, set sail and, and hit the other islands or other land masses. In their deep history, they had uh, remnants of dragon uh, mythology of some kind. So it's kind of, kind of crazy, you know. And I'm not saying that. You know, one time there were dragons or anything like that. You know, I'm not trying to say something fruity, but, um, yeah, look it up. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Fun fact for you. And they kind of look like dinosaurs, so maybe they were just, uh, you know, leftover dinosaurs. I don't know. Whatever. So these wings are kind of crappy, so forgive me for that, but... I'm just kind of scribbling this in real fast as I talk and you know the more I talk the less I can concentrate but it's the point of a commentary right I'm trying to explain this and show you what I do so so you see I'm just kind of scribbling in texture again not being too overly dramatic about where it goes and how it goes and you know I can do all that in the later stages again um, I'm not still not happy with the the wings and I want to say I should have more of an arm coming up. It shouldn't just be a wing there. But, you know, just to get this thing down and done and finish up this video for you. And then, you know, later on you can check back and see the full digital 
rendition of it. But I just wanted to kind of get this out there because uh, a few people had asked me to do uh, dragon drawing, and I'm like, man, I hate to procrastinate. I'm just not really, I don't fancy myself as being this great artist when it comes to dragons, but uh, I would like to get better at them. They are very cool. They're fun to draw, um, and there's definitely a big following for it. A lot of people like them, so... Um, so yeah, I'd do something like that, and then back here I'd kind of have some kind of, you know, tail whiplashing around. I don't know if I'd maybe bring it up and around. I don't want it to conflict too much with the neck, but I also don't want it to go in the same shape. That almost does, but I think I would do something like that, and maybe have it roll back around through here. And then, you know, have fun with the, the spikes and all that. I need to draw more of these too because, you know, you see some people that are just amazing at these and, and uh, one that comes to mind, an artist that I that I draw with and study with at times, uh, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, as an artist by the name of Chris Scalf and uh, you can look his channel up and man, amazing, uh, amazing dragons, you know, you'll see when you go there, it's just, just nuts, I mean the guy can just whip those things out, like he's just very good at drawing dragons. Um, and uh, the more you research them, there's a lot of guys out there, I shouldn't say a lot, but there's some guys out there that can really do some amazing dragons, and um, it's just it's just cool to see. Like, it's cool to see that, that um, some people get that into them and, and make these paintings that look so ultra real and so impressive. Um, so that's what kind of inspired me to uh, work on some of these. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm sure uh, it's going to take some time before... I can make mine look, uh, you know, nearly as professional as some of the stuff that's out there. But uh, that's the that's the beauty of the jaunt of the. Uh, you know, that's what you strive for as an artist, anyways, is to, you know, get good at stuff like this. Um, and the more you do it, the more you're going to start to see. Like, uh, I know I've seen this in plenty of other fantasy drawings, but what I'm kind of seeing in the background right here is kind of this uh, lake and streams of lava and fire which are going to go really well with the, the dragon concept, right? So I just kind of take these little pathways, and I just picture that those are filled with lava, and, you know, I'd light those up uh, red. I might even do something where, you know, you have like an indentation of the rock next to it, and that'll light up too. Uh, it's, it's another cool thing I've noticed that people do with their dragons. They'll make sure that when the fire, you know, say this dragon's breathing fire or something like this, you know, something like that, um, that the light bounces off the scale, uh, scales of the nose, the eye, and it gives another cool light source to really bring that out, so, which I don't know if I'm going to have him breathing dragon, uh, breathing dragon, I don't know if I'll have him breathing dragon, uh, if I'll have him breathing fire or not, but we'll see. So this is the initial sketch, I just wanted to get that to you, like I said, some people had asked for it, so there's the beginning sketch of it, and uh, check back and you'll be able to see I'll probably do a speed painting of the rest of it where I actually digitally paint it now so you'll be able to check back and see that and then you can always go to my DeviantArt and see my finished pieces when they're done what they look like after I you know, slave over them for hours and hours and um, be sure to let me know what you think and uh, you know, keep posting and com or I'll keep posting, keep commenting and let me know what you'd like to see in the future and uh, that's what I'll, I'll be sure to uh, try to incorporate into my videos. So thanks very much for watching. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.